हे गाइस वेलकम टू माय लीगल क्लासेस दिस इज गणेश पुजारी एंड इन द सीरीज ऑफ लॉ ऑफ टॉट्स इन माय लास्ट क्लास वी हैव स्टार्टेड अ डिस्कशन ऑन वेदर इट इज लॉ ऑफ टॉट और लॉ ऑफ टॉट्स देन वी अंडरस्टूड देयर आर टू इंपॉर्टेंट थियरीज वाइडर थियरी एंड द नैरोअर और द पिजन होल थियरी एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू अप्रोच द वाइडर थियरी और द लॉ ऑफ टॉट नाउ हियर वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट डज सर फ्रेडरिक पोलॉक हैज टू से or what does percy henry winfield has to say and we'll also try understand what is prima facie tort theory as well as we will try understand this entire concept with the help of lot of case laws which have contributed new tort to this world not taking much of your time let's get into the first slide so basically we have to understand that there were two groups one group said every civil wrong is a tort whereas the other group said no there are already named torts available and if the civil wrong is falling under any of those already named torts in that case it will be considered as tort so the first group is considered as the wider theory group whereas the other group is considered as narrower because it is limiting the number of torts we are discussing the narrower theory in my next class but for now let's focus on sir frederick pollock's wider theory this is known as law of tort first thing first why are we calling this theory as wider theory in narrow theory or the pigeon hole theory what happens there there are already defined torts like negligence defamation assault etc and if the tort which is coming to the court is proven that it is falling one of the defined tort only then that will be considered as torts but in wider theory it is not so there are civil wrongs and if the plaintiff can prove that there is a civil wrong happened against him in that case that will be considered as tort so we can see this as civil wrong 1 2 3 4 civil wrong 20 civil wrong 50 there can be any number of tort in this theory that is why this is known as wider theory and this is famous because of what because it allows new tort to consider inside the court now to understand this in detail let's get into the next slide what does sir frederick pollock say he says all injuries done to another person are torts unless there is some justification recognized by law or to put it in simple english every injury is a tort unless justified okay now there are four important components that you have to see the first thing there is a wrongful act and then such wrongful act which is committed by the defendant is done without any legal justification and thirdly such wrongful act which is done without any legal justification by the defendant is causing some legal injury to another or to the plaintiff and such wrongful act which is committed without legal justification causing legal injury to the plaintiff will be treated as tort that's what sir frederick pollock has to say so what happens here in this theory basically the courts get greater chance to define new torts instead of putting everything in the old defined torts or just leave the case just because it is not falling and sitting in one of the defined torts there is always a chance with the court to define a new name to that tort which is coming inside the court as a civil wrong and continue the proceedings that is the beauty of this theory so there is no limitation in this theory to the law of tort because every civil wrong can be named as a new tort and can be continued as a new proceeding that is always a chance now coming to the second part of this slide you are seeing a beautiful tree why that tree because the sir frederick pollock's wider theory is also known as percy henry winfield's theory he has strongly 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 supported sir frederick pollock and he has given his own analogy and because of that famous analogy this wider theory is most of the time is also called as percy henry winfield's theory now what is that analogy you have to see that beautiful tree for percy henry winfield he says law of tort is like a growing tree with several branches what does that mean law of tort is growing and from time to time courts have created new torts is what he has to mean 
imagine there is a tree that is tree of thoughts and there are already defined thoughts like negligence defamation assault wrongful confinement etc and a case coming to the court and such case is not falling under one of the defined thoughts so does it mean that the proceeding will end there no for percy henry winfield it is a new opportunity just like a tree which is giving birth to new branches every day there can be new thought coming to existence in this beautiful world which is what percy henry winfield has to say so every branch can be named in its own way and that will be considered as a new thought and every now and then there is opportunity for new thought if we are saying that there are opportunity for new thoughts what are those new thoughts that we have got from different famous case laws which is what we are going to see in my next slide here is the very 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 important slide because we are having very 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 important case laws which have contributed new thoughts to this world yes i am saying so many very 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 because these are very 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 important case laws which have given new thought to the world i am not saying these are the only case laws there are hundreds of such case laws which has given birth to new thoughts but we are limiting to only these many case laws for the academic purpose now one thing i am making it very clear i am not going to explain these case laws at this moment because that is not the purpose here but we'll definitely discuss these case laws here or there that will definitely come in our future syllabus but for now what are the contributions of these case laws the thought of inducement to a wife to leave her husband now if somebody is inducing wife of someone to leave her husband that is a thought which was decided in the case of winsmore versus green bank so that case gave a birth to a new thought that inducing someone's wife to leave her husband will be considered as a civil wrong the second important case law that gave us the thought of deceit or dishonesty is pasley versus freeman the third case law that is the thought of inducement of breach of contract remember breach of contract is not the subject matter of tort but if there is inducement of breach of contract then that will be considered as a tort which was decided in the case law of lumley versus guy the fourth case law which is a very 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 important case law which gave the tort of strict liability that is raylands versus fletcher and to continue the strict liability from strict liability to absolute liability was discussed in mc mehta versus union of india that way the tort of absolute liability is the contribution of india the next one the tort of intimidation was the contribution of rooks versus bernard case law and finally everyone has a duty of care confined to their final and proximate neighbor was decided in the case of donog versus stevenson now these are the few very important case laws which gave birth to new thought inside the court hall while learning the wider theory you should also be aware that there can be an independent short question on prima facie thought theory if you get a question you may start with the wider theory but focus more on this particular judgment from the new mexico supreme court in the case of shimits versus smentoski here in this judgment four elements are discussed to consider something as a new thought and try to by heart all those four elements you have to just write them to get the full marks there so what are the four elements firstly an intentional lawful act by defendant secondly an intent to injure the plaintiff thirdly injury to the plaintiff and lastly the absence of justification or insufficient justification for the defendant's act or to make it simple there is an intentional act by the plaintiff 
with the intention of causing injury to the plaintiff and it has caused really injury to the plaintiff and for such injury there is no justification or there is absence of justification or there are insufficient justification in that case the defendant's act will be considered as a tort which is known as prima facie tort theory i hope that is very clear with that i am taking you to next slide to understand who all has supported the wider theory we are starting the supporters part from winfield now winfield has written a book in the name of law of tort and when we are discussing narrow theory or sir john solomon's theory we are discussing about his book also that is law of torts now here is a book which is known as law of tort and there is a book with the name of law of torts so that is the way we can easily remember the book's name also and what does winfield has to say he said all injuries done to a person are torts unless there is justification recognized by law so every civil wrong which has no justification by any law in that case that will be considered as tort as far as winfield is considered now in the case law of ashby versus white holt cj strongly recognized winfield theory saying that the wider theory has great support with the legal maxim that is ubi just ibi remedium he said every civil wrong will have a remedy so if somebody has experienced legal injury they will definitely get compensation for the same and that is why there is always a chance for birth of new tort as winfield has said which is what holt cj has to say the third supporter that is pratt cj in the case law of champman versus picker sigil strongly supported the wider theory by saying torts are infinitely various not limited or confirmed there is no end to birth of new torts and they are not limited or confined to the defined torts which is what pratt cj has to say in dong yu versus stevenson lord macmillan has made a observation that the common law is not proved powerless to attach new liabilities and create new duties where experience has proved that it is desirable so there is no limitation by the common law to bring in new tort which is what lord macmillan has to say finally bowen lj has said at common law there was a cause of action whenever one person did damage to another willfully or intentionally without a just cause or excuse that way if somebody has caused a legal injury to another without legal justification there there is always a chance for considering a new tort inside the court hall which bowen lj has to say that way all these jurist or thinkers or justices all of them have considered that there is always chance for a new tort the law of tort is not limited to the only defined torts now that's what they have to say but what are the critics has to say which is what we are going to see in my next slide when we are discussing about criticisms we have to discuss about sir john william solomon and the very important case bollinger versus costa breva wine company limited i am not discussing that here because in the third video where we are going to discuss the narrower theory or sir john william solomon's theory or his great pigeon hole theory there we will definitely discuss what sir john william solomon has to say or the bollinger versus costa breva wine company limited case but for here i will just make a small list of few very important criticisms i'll just read out the first one there is no uniformity or pre decided wrongs were established in law of tort unlike law of torts where there are already decided torts which are available here they are not pre decided which was the first criticism the second one as this is an ever evolving jurisprudence it allows to include new wrongs according to the various cases sometimes it can be very subjective and can prove to be arbitrary what 
criticizes here has to say is this law will become subjective and gives an opportunity to become arbitrary because every court can apply its jurisprudence and decide the case that way it becomes subjective and it may also turn to arbitrary which was the concern mentioned by the criticizers the third one there can be misuse of law of thought as it is dealt case to case basis like the second one it can be subjective it can be arbitrary that way it can be easily misused by the court which is what criticizers have to say the last one the flexible approach is completely opposite to the wrong which is established already in the criminal procedure code of crime if you see in crime the crimes are already defined but in civil wrong if we are just keeping it open in that case this approach is completely different from criminal law and it becomes subjective it becomes arbitrary it can be misused all of that there are chances which is what criticizers has to say now i will not end it here we learned what is the wider theory we learned what the supporters has to say we learned the case laws which has contributed new thought to this world we also understood what criticizers said about this theory now to understand more about the thought process of the criticizers we have to learn the next important theory that is the narrow theory or sir john william solomon's theory or the famously known as the pigeon hole theory that we are discussing in my next video which will be the third video in this series and with that i am handing over this presentation to nishan well when you are thinking about wider theory someone got wider space to play let them play with that i'm concluding this session please subscribe our channel please like share and comment our videos thank you bye bye